so uh, i hope that uh, uh, the problem formulation is okay now the problem formulation is okay now uh, the the setup the setup is okay we have still not formulated the problem so we have simply written the constraints and so on the next step is obviously going to data going to solver and actually solving the problem right uh, actually solving the problem uh what do i do okay let me let me formulate the uh i have already formulated the problem so do i show you do i delete all that yeah sure why not why not i'll show you sure let me go to solver let me go to solver uh i will reset everything i will reset everything okay blank out where is my objective function set objective objective function here this is my objective function it's a minimization objective by changing what what are my decision variables my decision variables are all here okay where are my decision variables these are all my decision variables okay so before i come to that let us do this properly let us also delete these values so that the problem is not already solved so let us ask excel to start with a blank start with a blank okay objective function is zero then i will go to solver Ob objective is this objective is this minimization objective by changing what these are my decision variables what are my decision variables all uh, right what are my decision variables my decision variables are w's v's and the z's these are my decision variables i have nicely are put them in the same row so that i can nicely select them easily so these are my decision variables all the way from here w1 right i am selecting w1 then selecting w2 v1 v2 z all the z variables they are my decision variables that's all these are my decision variables now what are the constraints all my constraints all my constraints are here these are the left hand side of the constraints notice that these are left hand side of the constraints these greater than or equal to constraints 10 of them have to be greater than greater than or equal to zeros so the right hand side is all zeros add what is the next constraint next constraint is this last constraint which is the equality constraint equality constraint and this has to be equal to this okay add now what else do we want okay now let me put a cancel here right let me put a cancel here are we done with formulation unfortunately not let us look at this we want the w variables to be greater than or equal to 0 we want the z variables to be greater than or equal to 0 but we don't want v variables to have any kind of restriction we want them to be unrestricted how do you do that so go to add variables where are my where are my w variables my w variables are here these are my w variables make them greater than or equal to 0 so greater than or equal to 0 add them uh, z these are all my z variables these are all my z variables make them also greater than or equal to 0 i am making them explicitly greater than or equal to 0 right i am not doing anything for v i am not doing anything for v so i am telling excel i don't care i will remove this checkbox also this checkbox tells the excel that make all the decision variables non negative i don't want that i don't want v variables to have non negativity i want them to be unrestricted i have explicitly made the w variables uh, greater than or equal to 0 i have made all the z variables explicitly greater than or equal to 0 and i have not said that all the decision variables should be greater than or equal to 0 which means that uh, v can be unrestricted okay now if i hit a solve button hopefully i will get the same answer that i had originally put up there ah, good okay all the constraints are satisfied we got the same answer that was originally there on this excel sheet so i have not goofed up anywhere right uh, so uh, the problem is solved optimally now let us understand what this means okay let us understand what this means first of all important variables important variables now what are the optimal values of the weights so by by this formulation what did we want to get we wanted to understand what is the weightage what is the importance given by this consumer to each of the attributes attribute 1 and attribute 2 right 
consumer looked at the attribute values then consumer said these are my choices so from these choices we want to understand how much was the weightage how much was the importance given by this consumer for each of the attributes and the values are 0 0.006 and 0 0.009 now in isolation they don't mean anything i mean what do you mean by 0 0.006 and 0 0.009 right don't look at it this way look at it this way if i take this right 0 0.009 divided by 0 0.006 i get 1.46 so essentially what we mean is a uh, consumer 2 obviously provided more weightage to attribute 2 when she provided the choices she was allocating higher weightage almost 1.46 times the weightage that she had assigned for attribute 1 okay so what does that tell you uh, uh, now what is the input uh, what do we understand now uh, what does what do these values tell us these values tell us that attribute 2 is clearly more important actually uh, 46 percent more important than attribute 1 so all the product designers pay attention uh, focus on attribute 2 and getting it right okay make sure that you get the attribute 2 right because consumer is looking at attribute 2 more than they are looking at attribute 1 this is what we mean by the values of w variables okay now let us interpret the values of v variables remember v was actually a variable that we had defined which was not originally in the equation right v was defined as w into p or uh, w into x okay w into x and what had we said at that time we had said v uh, what was the original objective not only was uh, the, one of the objectives of solving the optimization problem was to understand which attributes a consumer is giving more importance to but the other other thing was how do i get my ideal product now my ideal product was x my ideal product was x if you recall if you go back to this formulation if you go back to this formulation the ideal point the ideal point of the consumer was x so i want to get the coordinates of x now we said we will define a variable called v and from that v we will get the value of x so this is what we said okay so this is what we said how do we get this x values we get the x values from the w values and the v values so v is equal to w into x so what is x x is v divided by w so how do i use the v variables v variables are used not uh, in isolation but v variables help me calculate the ideal coordinates of my attributes so let us go to the data these are the v values remember v values were unrestricted we, we allowed v to take on any value any value in the sense negative value positive value zero why did we allow that because the ideal coordinates ideal coordinates need not always fall in the first quadrant ideal coordinates may fall uh, uh, in the in the negative quadrant either negative value of x or negative value of uh, y right so uh, we, we wanted to allow that therefore we allowed the v we allowed the v to be unrestricted we allowed the v to be unrestricted right v was unrestricted even in the formulation we did not impose a constraint that we have to be greater than or equal to zero okay so uh, therefore uh, we can take on uh, v's v1 and v2 attribute 1 and attribute 2 we can take on any values uh, coincidentally uh, both of them turned out to be positive in our optimal solution doesn't guarantee that it will always happen now how do i use this v value x1 is calculated as v1 divided by w1 okay x1 is calculated as v1 divided by w1 similarly x2 is calculated as v2 divided by w2 right that's how we are going to use the v values that's how we are going to use the v values we are going these these are going to give us the ideal coordinates okay so how have the v variables helped us v variables have helped us calculate the optimal coordinates of my product so if me as a market researcher or me as a product designer want to offer a product which will be most preferred by the consumer by this consumer if i want to design a product which will be most preferred by this consumer the attribute 1 value should be 5.63 the attribute 2 value should be 6.67 these are all the values that are present in the five variants that are currently available to the market 
currently available to the consumers none of them are even close to the ideal point right none of them have values of attribute 1 close to 5.63 none of them have uh, attribute 2 value which is close to 6.67 this optimization problem is telling me that the ideal value for attribute 1 is 5.63 the ideal value of attribute 2 is 6.67 so uh, once again uh, a job for the uh, product developers uh, product developer should design a product where the attribute 1 value is 5.63 and attribute 2 value is 6.67 now as we have discussed uh, attribute 1 and attribute 2 could be anything uh, we need not even uh, uh, say that the product should always have two attributes right this is a generic formulation we have shown formulation uh, where uh, there were only two attributes because we had data for two attributes the formulation is generic enough that we can solve for any number of attributes but this is what i this is this is very important information for me i directly get inputs for my product design right uh, i i now i need to target this value of attribute 1 this value of attribute 2 so uh, we have explained w1 w2 the importance attached by this consumer for uh, uh, each of the attributes v1 and v2 mostly used in calculating the coordinates of the ideal point okay now let us understand the z values Okay, Z values in some sense represent the violation of the pairwise choices provided by the consumer. Okay, V values in some uh, Z values in some ways represent the violation of the pairwise choices given by the consumer. Now, the V value, uh, the the optimal objective function value of two point uh, zero point two five comes from this Z value, which is Z one two. Z12 turns out to be 0.25. Okay. Now, what is the Z? Z represents the violation. Z represents the violation. Ideally, I want all the violations to be 0. So, ideally, I want the objective function value to be 0. Unfortunately, it is not. So, what are we saying? If we, if we assume that the consumer had had assigned a weight of 0 0.006 for attribute 1, had assumed a weight of uh, 0 0.009 for uh, attribute 2, then all the pairs of choices will be correct. All the pairs of choices will be correct. However, the choice 1, 2 it's, is violated. What are the pairwise choice? 1, 2 that is violated. So, what are we saying? We are saying that if consumer had these weights in mind, if consumer had these weights in mind, this pairwise choice is violated. Consumer should have ideally uh, preferred 2 over 1, but consumer has given me data that she prefers 1 over 2. So, this is this is in some ways uh, not uh, desirable. Ideally, I wanted none of the pairwise choices given by the consumer to be violated, but uh, uh, here it's the violation is minimal or only one out of the 10 pairs uh, the choices were violated but this is this is uh, an indirect way of measuring how good my fit is how good my fit is remember we said what was the objective of this formulation the objective of this formulation was to look at the badness of fit poorness of fit right the objective function was actually poorness of fit how poor is my fit Right. When I, when I, when, what is my fit? My fit is calculating the W values, uh, calculating the W values and X values. These are, this is the fit that I am uh, suggesting from the data, from the choice data. Right. So, is my, is my fit correct? So, I am saying, well, the fit is not perfectly correct. If, if uh, I use these weights now, if I use these weights now, uh, one pair, one pair of choice gets violated. So, how, how, how is this linear programming model? fitting to the data how is the linear programming model fitting to the data well it's not perfect but it's not bad either only one of the 10 pairs are violated right so that's what this objective function value means so uh, that have uh, with that hopefully we have explained everything in the formulation everything in the formulation uh, once again this formulation is generic i have taken an example where there were only five product variants and uh, two attribute data uh, actually uh, paying homage to the original article that article also had uh, five variants and two attribute data 
but obviously I wanted to play around with the attribute values. Uh, in that article, they have used uh, different uh, uh, values of the attributes. I have used this 1.5 and 12 and so on, right? Uh, so I have I have played around with this. Uh, the choices data, uh, I don't, uh, uh, so these are the choices data. And uh, the problem formulation is completely shown right in front of you here in this session. So uh, uh, realistically, uh, the, the any product variant may have multiple attributes. How will that change the optimization problem? Uh, it will only increase the 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 uh, the columns here. Instead of only calculating W1, W2, you will have to calculate the weights for each attribute. So there will be W1, W2, W3, W4, WP, all the way to three-dimensional data. Similarly, V V will have to be calculated. So here also the columns will get added V1, V2, V3, V4. Uh, correspondingly, the coordinates will have to be found for each of the attributes, attribute 1, attribute 2, attribute 3, attribute 4 and so on. So the columns will get added. Similarly, you will have to calculate the A, J, P, A, J, K, P values. We have only calculated A, J, K, 2. You will have to calculate B, J, K, 1, B, J, K, 2, B, J, K, 3 and so on. This will have no difference. Uh, this part of the formulation will be no different. Right? This part of the formulation will be no different. Uh, you are not going to make any change. You are simply going to shift it to the right because uh, columns are getting added to the left. So you will have uh, no change in the Z variables uh, because simply they are defined for each pairwise data and pairwise data doesn't depend on the number of attributes. Pairwise data doesn't depend on the number of attributes. There is no P here, right? It's only JK. So the Z variables are not going to change. Uh, only you will have more W variables, more V variables and therefore more X to be calculated. Right. Uh, uh, how, what happens uh, if you have more variants to choose from, right, uh, more variants to choose from. So you are actually increasing the number of choices. If you increase the number of choices, the N will go up N will go up. And therefore you will have to ask the consumers uh, more preferences, right? She we have asked the consumers uh, preferences on 10 pairs N into N minus one divided by two. So uh, if, the, if there are more product variants, then we will have to ask consumers about their preferences for each pairwise comparison, for each pairwise comparison. And therefore, there will be more uh, rows getting added to this table, more rows getting added to this table, because then we will have to ask the consumer, what does she prefer here and what does uh, she prefer here, right? Uh, so uh, if there was a product variant six, then I will have to ask the consumer, what does she prefer between one and six? What does she prefer between two and six, right? What does she prefer between three and six and so on, right? All that, uh, all those uh, preferences will have to be added here. Since there are more rows getting added to this table, how will that change? Uh, how will that change here, right? How will that change here? So you will have to essentially add more rows here because in the formulation, in the formulation, right? Uh, these constraints, the first set of constraints, the first set of constraints are essentially for each ordered pair JK. Since now we will have more ordered pair JK, you will have more of these type of constraints, more of these type of constraints. This is greater than or equal to zero constraints, more of these constraints, right? More of these constraints. More of these constraints will be there. The last constraint, however, is going to be still the same summation of all the AJK values, summation of all the BJK values. And uh, that is kind of uh, equality, that is that uh, kind of normalization constraint, left hand side equal to right hand side, right hand side being one, right? So that constraint is not going to change because in the last constraint, there is no ordered pair. We are not, we are in only increasing the ordered pair. So we are not touching the final constraint, which is simply uh, summation equal, equal to one type of constraint. Okay. So uh, uh, yeah, that's how the changes to the optimization problem will happen. Right. But this is a simplistic linear programming formulation for our conjoint analysis problem. So let us end the session here uh, and uh, move to the next session, which is a statistical method.